The following video series is going to be focusing on operations involving radical expressions. This particular video will be focusing on the product property of radicals. Now, we've dealt with this product property of radicals before when we were simplifying square roots and simplifying nth roots. And it says that for any real numbers a and b and any integer n, where n is greater than 1, if you have the nth root of the product a, b, you can split it into the nth root of a times the nth root of b. And we use this concept when we are simplifying radicals. So it's not brand new. We're just going to be practicing it to improve our skills. So if we have the square root of 81x to the fourth, what you do is you split it apart. You do the square root of 81 times the square root of x to the fourth. Well, the square root of 81 is 9. And the square root of x to the fourth is x squared because remember you're taking the square root you divide the 4 by 2 and there's nothing remaining inside so you have 9x squared so if you have the fourth root of 16 a to the 24th b to the 13th you split it across the fourth root of 16 and for this one i'm going to split the fourth root across each variable so the fourth root of a to the 24th and the fourth root of b to the 13th. So the fourth root of 16. Now remember the quick way to do a fourth root without a calculator, if it is going to work out to be an integer, would be to take the square root. So the square root of 16 is 4. And then take the square root of again. And so the square root of 4 is 2. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. So now you have the fourth root of a to the 24th. Remember the trick is to Take the exponent on the inside, divide by your root. So 24 divided by 4 is 6 with no remainder. So nothing remains inside. You have an 8 to the 6 on the outside. You know, how many times does 4 go into 13? It goes in there three times nicely. So b cubed comes outside. Well, how many remain inside? Well, 4 and 3 give you 12. You want 13, so there's one more b remaining inside, b to the first power. So my final answer is 2a to the 6th b cubed times the fourth root of b. And so in these two examples, we split apart across the root. But if we look at example number 3, we'll see that we can actually merge together as well. So they're already split apart, but I notice I can't simplify. I mean, the cube root of 9 doesn't work. You know, cube root of n squared doesn't work. Cube root of 3 can't simplify. Cube root of n can't simplify. But I notice I'm multiplying the two radicals together. So I can't simplify them when they're separate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the insides together to form one cube root. So 9 and 3 is 27 n squared and n is n cubed. And so now take a look. What's the cube root of 27? Well, it's 3. What's the cube root of n cubed? It's n. And so now it is able to be simplified. And so sometimes you're going to have to realize you need to split apart if it's one root to simplify it down, or if it's two roots of the product, if they can't be simplified separately, then merge them together into one and then simplify. So this is how we simplify roots dealing with the product property of radicals.